the book of Second Samuel, chapter 22, David's Song of Deliverance. And David spoke to the Lord the words of the song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompass me, the torrents of destruction assail me, the cords of shawl entangle me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I call upon the Lord, to my God I call. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry came to his ears. Then the earth wheel and rock, the foundations of the heavens tremble and crick, because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a chariot and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind. He made darkness around him his canopy. Thick clouds, a gathering of water, out of the brightness before him. Coals of fire flamed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were laid bare. At the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me and from his statutes I did not turn aside. I was blameless before him and I kept myself from guilt. And the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanliness in his sight. With the merciful, you show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you show yourself blameless. With the purified, you deal purely. And with the crooked, you make yourself seem torturous. You save a humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them down. For you are my lamp. O oh Lord, and my God lightens my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? This God is my strong refuge and has made my way blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness made me great. You gave a wide place for my steps under me and my feet did not slip. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them and did not turn back until they were consumed. I consumed them. I thrust them through so that they did not rise. They fell under my feet. For you equipped me with strength for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. You made my enemies turn their backs to me. Those who hated me and I destroyed them. They looked. 
but there was none to save. They cried to the Lord, but he did not answer them. I beat them fine as the dust of the earth. I crushed them and stamped them down like the mirror of the streets. You delivered me from strife with my people. You kept me as the head of the nations. People whom I have not known serve me. Foreigners came cringing to me as soon as they heard of me. They obey me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their fortresses. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and brought down people under me, who brought me out of my enemies. You exalted me above those who rose against me. You delivered me from men of violence. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing praises to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king, and shows steadfast love to his anointed to David and his offspring forever. Chapter 23 The Last Words of David the Oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the Oracle of the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning, like rain that makes grass to sprout from the earth. For does not my house stand so with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, order in all things and secure. For will he not cause to prosper of all my help and my desire? But worthless men are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them arms himself with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly consumed with fire. David's mighty men, these are the names of the mighty men who David had, Joshab, Bathsheba, a Tychedamite. He was chief of the three. He wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. And next to him among the three mighty men was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, son of Ahoi. He was with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for a battle. And the men of Israel withdrew. He rose and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clung to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the men returned after him only to strip the slain. And next to him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herorite. The Philistines gathered together at Lehi, where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the men flee from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines, and the Lord worked a great victory. And three of the thirty chief men went down and came about the harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam. When a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim, David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. But he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief of the thirty, and he welded his spear against three hundred men and killed them and won a name beside the three. He was the most renowned of the thirty and became their commander, but he did not attain to the three. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valid man of Kapsil, a doer of great deeds. 
he struck down two Ariels of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on the day when snow had fallen, and he struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Benaiah went down to him with a staff and snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and kill him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and won a name beside the three mighty men. He was renowned among the dirty, but he did not attain to the three. And David set him over his bodyguard. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Ma of Harad, Elika of Harad, Elez the Peltite, Ara the son of Akish of Takoa, Ebiezer of Anahal, Membelai, the Hushatite, Zalman, the Alhite, Maharai of Natofa, Halab, the son of Balanai of Natofa, Atiai, the son of Ribiai of Gibeon, of the people of Benjamin, Nai of Parathon, Hidiai, of the books of Gaash, Abi Alban, the Abatite, As Mephev of Baharim, Ali Abba, the Shah Abanite, sons of Jashin, Jonathan, Jama the Hararite, Ahiom, the son of Shara the Hararite, Eliphalet, the son of Ahasba of Makal, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel of Gilalite, Ezra of Carmel, Parai the Arbite, Egal, the son of Nathan of Soba, Nai the Gadite, Elnit, the Amorite, Naharera of Baraf, armor bearer of Joab, the son of Sarariah, Ira the Ithrite, Urab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, 37 in all. Amen. Today we're going to look at 2 Samuel chapters 22 to 23. Chapter 22 is a psalm written by David. This psalm is at least 90% overlapping with Psalm 18. Now, this psalm was written when David was running away from Saul's pursuit in his early years. It was written before he sinned with Bathsheba, but it was placed at the end of the book of Samuel because this psalm summarized David's life and his spiritual journey, how he obeyed God, relied on God, how he was able to overcome his flesh. Now, the spiritual insight from David can be roughly divided into three parts. Verses 2 to 20 talk about God's people relying on God for salvation. Verses 21 to 28 talk about God's people relying on God to be delivered from sin. And the last section, verses 29 to 46, talks about how God's people rely on God to overcome. Only when God's people truly rely on God can they fully give Him glory that is due to Him. And this is what it meant by verse 50. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing praises to your name. Now, as we reflect upon David's psalm thoughtfully, we recognize that this is also how we experience God. We uh, rely on God, overcome sin, just as it is stated in verses 23 to 24. For all his rules were before me, and from his statues I did not turn aside. I was blameless before him, and I kept myself from guilt. Yet, as David intentionally kept himself from sins, he transgressed greatly later in life. Not only did he commit adultery, but he also committed murder. So, dear family, we must live together as a body and hold each other accountable. We need to submit under our leader's covering, and that means we allow our leaders to correct us. We must not think that we are always right, we we'll never fail, that my perspective is the best, we need to walk humbly with our God. Now, of course, looking back at David's life, we must also give thanks to God. Though David committed such grievous sins, God still restored him. David repented with his full heart, and the relationship and communication between God and him was fully restored. God completely forgave him and restored his destiny and calling. 
we can always turn back. No sin is so great that God cannot deliver us from. Although it might be as David, we have to live with the consequences of the sins we committed. But know that we are completely forgiven because of Jesus' finished work on the cross. As long as we truly repent, there is no such thing as being too big or too late. It will never be too late. For our God, and just declare right now, our God is able to restore. Now I want to highlight a key revelation from David's life. Let's look at the first half of verse 20. He brought me to a broad place because he delighted in me. Well, you have to know that when David wrote this psalm, he just escaped from Saul's grasp. So what happened right before this? Now, God told David to go to the land of Judah. So he went from the Philistines' land to the land of Judah. But as Saul relentlessly pursued him, the pressure was so great and in fear, David retreated back to the land of the Philistines and settled in his stronghold, Ziklag. Now, his stronghold, Ziklag, was plundered by Amalekites, and all the men's, including his own wives, properties, and children were taken away. Now, at that time, David saw the Lord, and God told him to go after his enemies, and all loss will be recovered. At the same time period, Saul died, which meant that David was finally free of Saul's clutch. So how did David describe God's deliverance of him? Well, David said, God saved me because he delighted in me. Now, if someone was running a commentary on the side, they might say, "Uh, David, are you delusional? Look, you didn't obey. God had already told you that you would be the king. You didn't believe it, and you were afraid. You were bound by fear. Come on. But look at David. And there's the important revelation here. Though David was full-hearted after God, he still struggled with weaknesses, struggled with sins, but he knew that God was pleased with him. Why? Because when his sin was exposed, he recognized that at the root of it all, his offense was against God and God alone. He was willing to repent wholeheartedly. Now, dear family, this is our core identity. We are people who love God with our full heart, but we do have weaknesses, and sometimes we're still attracted to sin, and sometimes we even fall back into the struggles that we have already overcome. But in our heart of hearts, we press in to obey, and when we sin, we sincerely repent and turn, unlike Saul, who kept on making excuses and not owning up. Now, this is a picture that describes a person who loves God. Although we still make mistakes, just as David, um, who committed such grievous sins, and though God did forgive him, he still had to pay the price for those sins. Now God told David, the sword would not leave your household. So David knew, he knew God's discipline would come, and he had to face the consequences. Yet in the midst of it all, David still dwelled in the joy of his salvation. And that is his relationship with God was restored, and he knew he was accepted by God, and God delighted in him. Now, the enemy wants us to think that I am a sinner, and I just couldn't do it. Although I really want to love God, I am a failure, so forget it. No, David here said that we are people who love God. Though we have weaknesses, God is pleased with us, and God saved us. It is because he delights in us. Now, I believe this is the truth that God wants to learn from David. God looks into our hearts. You know, it's because David knew this, and he knew God's love. He knew God's mercy. He also knew God's justice. So after he sinned, we can see him say, Lord, I would rather fall into the hands of Jehovah than fall into the hands of others. Now let's take a look at chapter 22, verse 36, where David said, You have given me the shield of your salvation, and your gentleness made me great. Here he specifically talks about the gentleness of God. He says, God, you are so gentle to me. You could have given me a more severe punishment according to what I have done, the sins I have committed. But you really don't treat me like what I deserve. God, your gentleness gives me courage in the days to come. So let's break it down. What is that courage? 
Well, it means, Lord, I will not be fearful of you because I know you are delighted with me. I will run to you, even if the enemy has his day with me, but I will turn and repent no matter what happens to me because I trust you. Just like the prodigal son who suddenly realized that his father's house is the better option, though he was prepared to accept his lot with the pigs. Know that God, in his gentleness and patience, used all kinds of means to reveal my weaknesses, to show the areas within me that needed to be cut off, be transformed, be disciplined, be made whole. But we can respond to God. God, you are so patient. Even if I struggle in my responses, you're still willing to teach me, lead me patiently. You lead me with kindness and love. This gentleness causes me to walk in his path of life. In the days to come, even if I fail, I will have the strength to stand up again and come back to you. This is David, who after committing such a great sin, repented wholeheartedly. He uh, did not say, ho oh, hey, look at the sin I've committed. I don't deserve to be a king or walking my calling. Nope, David walked humbly before God. So even when Shimei cursed King David, David said, let him curse me. Look, my own son is seeking to kill me. Perhaps God will show mercy to me when he sees my suffering today. This is David's understanding of God. So no matter what happens to him, even in his weakest moments, David will always run to God first. Next, let's go to chapter 23. From verses 8 to 17, David's mighty men are mentioned. Now, these should be compared with the record in 1 Chronicles chapters 11 and 12. They can be divided into three groups. The first group consists of three mighty men. Their key characteristics is that they are loyal unto death without compromise. Whether it is Eliezer guarding the barley field or Shema who stood his ground in the lentil field, the key is their loyalty before the Lord. They had a very strong sense of their mission. They stood their ground even uh, even as their arms and their natural strength gave out and, and their hands fused to the handle of their swords. They stood their ground until defeat is turned into victory. Now, those who ran away before saw this, and they were able to turn and pick up after the plunder because these mighty men bravely stood the ground uncompromisingly guarding their mission. Again, because of their persistence in fighting for the mission and what God wanted to do, the whole situation got turned around. Now, this is very important. We may not be able to be like Samuel or David, <clears throat> who were the catalyst in turning a generation, but we can all contend for becoming one who is instrumental in turning situations around because of our loyalty and persistence and faithfulness in the Lord. No matter what the situation is, whether it is us uh, individually or our church, we uh, as the children of God, we can turn situations around because God put us in the midst of it. This is who we are called to be, ones who are loyal, dedicated, missional, and will not compromise, be, but remain faithful till the end. Now, the key characteristics of these three warriors in the second group is that they do not count the cost and are fully dedicated. Because uh, they heard that David was thirsty and wanted a drink from the well next to Jerusalem, Bethlehem, excuse me, the three of them crossed the Philistine camp and fetched water for David to drink, uh, disregarding their own safety. Their attentiveness to the longings of their leader speaks of how dedicated their love is. Now, David is an imperfect man who has sinned and been forgiven. Although he's a very wise king, a very precious vessel, no matter what, he cannot be compared with Jesus. Yet, these three warriors sacrifice their own safety in order to get water, just so David could drink it. This is a sincere, dedicated love. There are two points I wanted to highlight. First, it pleased the Lord that it pleases the Lord that we would love our leaders sincerely, even at a cost. 
Now, David is a type of Jesus. This also speaks to how we are called to love our God with our whole heart and soul at a cost of our time, money, or even life. We must be willing to put God as our first priority. God is moved by our dedicated love. Now, in this account, David was so moved that day that he did not dare to drink the water. He felt that the water was full of love. Only God is worthy of receiving this. So he poured it out as a drink offering. So dear family, no matter what you do for your leader or to God, know that God who searches the heart and sees everything is moved by your dedication as you pour out your love before Him in these acts of service. The third group includes the rest of the 31 mighty men. Although we don't have individual accounts recorded in the Bible, we can note several things. First, Joab is not listed among them, although all three brothers were all David's warriors. For example, Joah's brother Asahel, who died early in the exploits, was listed, although Joab lived 30 more years after him. Joab's other brother, Abishai, was also mentioned. Again, not Joab. From this, we can see what is important in God's sight. It is faithfulness and honesty in our innermost being. Joab lived in the gray zone, seemingly righteous, but acted according to his judgments based on his benefits. He has no fear of God or loyalty to his leader. We also see that even Harai, the armor bearer for Joab, was listed among the warriors. Dear family, if you are the, quote, armor bearer, un unquote, for your leader in the sight of God, as long as you're faithful and do your best, Truly, you're also counted as a mighty man of David. Second, we see Uriah is on the list of David's mighty men. And not just Uriah, even Bathsheba's father, Eliam, is also listed. Third, Gentiles, including the people of Hammon, were numbered among David's mighty men. God searches the heart, and not your rank or your family background, as long as you love God with all your heart. God will remember it, write it down in his book. Fourth, we see that after David established kingdom and ascended to his throne, he has 12 bodyguards. Seven of the 12 bodyguards are listed among the mighty men. Many of them were formal marauders uh, when they were in Ziklag, loaded down with bitterness and debts. Yet as they followed David year after year, they were slowly transformed into powerful warriors in the plan of God. Just like how David was described in Acts 13.36, that David has served God's purpose in his own generation. That is, he impacted the people of his generation who surrounded him. David served them, made them useful in the family of God. Though uh, they might start out as discontenders, bandits, debtors, the quote-unquote scum of the world, who were broken and left behind. Yet David changed them one by one, and they became vessels that could be used in the kingdom of God. So my dear family, are you excited at all reading this account of David's mighty men? Oh, I said to the Lord, Lord, I also want to be that person who is faithful and uncompromising, that I will love the Lord with all my heart at all cost. When I lack faith, Lord, strengthen me to press through. My dear family, let this be our call, our pursuit. We can also become mighty men in the kingdom of God, that we become like David, impacting those around us to rise up and be warriors in the kingdom of God. But at the same time, I notice that some of us tend to focus on our own spiritual pursuits and have no vision for those around us, or we're just waiting for others to reach out first before we give. Now, if you truly encounter the love of God, one who is after God's own heart, like David, those around you would be transformed because of your love and faithfulness to God. Ask yourself, are those around you loving God more because of your life? If not, just inviting, invite you to honestly seek the Lord to show what needs to be changed because that is your call. 
Now, if you do see people around you changing because of your love for God, shine on. Remember that I had mentioned in the last chapter: two generations walk together. As you raise up the younger generation to be warriors, they will be the ones to defeat the giants when our generation grows weary on the battlefield. There should be many, many mighty men and Davids in the kingdom of God. My dear family, this is your call. This is my call. May each one of us rise up and be such a one. Amen. Dear Bible Race viewers and families in Christ, thank you for watching our videos. We hope our sharing can enrich your life. If you find the content helpful, we hope you will support our ministry so we may continue to produce high-quality videos to serve the kingdom of God and hope to bless more people's lives. You can donate in the following ways: online giving by PayPal. If you are residing in Taiwan, you may also donate by bank transfer. Thanks again for your viewing and support. Every contribution is our greatest encouragement. We sincerely appreciate your support. May God bless you abundantly. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.